Okay, so part four, it has been several months, as many people have noticed. Uh, I think April was the last time I actually put a video up on this, and to the untrained eye, or really to most people, not much has happened. Life gets in the way, two, two young children. Uh, but I've essentially stripped it a lot more. Um, all the sill is now away and out on this side for rust repairs. I've braced it with some sort of more meaningful bars. Uh, I, I'm actually going to get it off and sandblasted and, and uh, acid dipped. I've decided, I didn't know about the acid dipping, but I'm gonna actually going to do that. I think that's a better way to know that I've got bare metal and pristine um, body to then do anything on from there. Uh, everything's just sort of loosened up and in sort of a temporary position to, to start removing the shell. The um, dual um, Master, uh, sorry, clutch and brake cylinder. Uh, I haven't actually taken off the brake lines yet. I actually had to make a slightly different cut here just to free the pedal box. It was all so rusted and uh, the bolts were just not given and the pedals couldn't come out unless it was just one unit. So I'm not sure if I'll... That's all going to be covered by the cover plate so it won't actually... And structurally, it doesn't make a difference. I could actually do a little bit of a rust repair panel there, but you know, everything else has come away quite nicely. Um, things are moving. The, the the body shell itself is now free. Uh, 31 bolts, if anyone's doing this uh, in their own time or has an MG repair. There's been uh, two bolts at the front here. There's nine bolts across there, which are actually threaded into the into the bodywork. These ones here have actually got bolts on them. There are two on either side down here at the bottom of the A pillars. Uh, there were two underneath the B pillar. They're the hidden ones that people often don't see. There were, uh, let me just remember, one, two along the boot there which are threaded into the bodywork. And there are four, two on each side uh, at right at the back there. Uh, difficult to get to. They've got nuts on them as well, so they were a bit uh, seized. So it took a little bit of work, but essentially all of them are off now. What I've discovered, however, and I'm a little bit, a little bit uh, worried about doing this, but we seem to have these rivets at the front. This one's come away. These rivets here are actually through the body into the chassis. So I'm actually going to have to drill out those rivets. As far as I'm aware, it's just these front two rivets and not the back two. So I'm not actually going to be removing the whole plate. It may be I have to remove these ones as well, but uh, I think I think I can get away with drilling out those. I'm hoping that's not going to be an issue down the track. The oil cooler's just uh, in there. I haven't drained the oil yet. I'm being a bit lazy. I'm just keen to get the body off and, and see what the chassis looks like and, and start the process moving for getting things stripped right back. And... and uh, it's way easier to get the engine out and to get to things once the body's off anyway. So that is that is that. Now to get this off, what I spent yesterday creating, and I'm sorry I didn't put a video up of this. This is the first attempt at a dolly. Now it may end in tears. Um, essentially I've done some measurements of the bolts here because this is essentially where most of the body weight is there's not a huge amount of body weight up there it's actually not that heavy it's i think about 100 kilograms if that so two uh, two people can lift it easily enough uh, I've, I've measured up for where these bolt holes are here because i'm actually going to try and screw it into the dolly just so a little bit more stability i've measured the height of these bolts down here so that'll correlate with this so a slightly longer cross member across there so that's going to line up with the front cockpit the bolts along the B pillar, that's the lowest point, so everything's been measured uh, as that as a sort of um, focal point or key data. These ones at the back here, this is going to be along that back boot. So that measurement here will correlate with these two here. Again, I can screw them down. So I'm kind of thinking most of the body weight is in the middle, um, maybe slightly more towards the front. What I've done on the underside just from the local hardware store. These are rated for 100 kilograms each, so they'll plenty cope with it. And each one has got a, a brake, each caster. So I'll be able to move the thing around, get it get it moving around the garage and away for, um, for sandblasting. So it was difficult to exactly measure, but I've got a little bit of tolerance, a little bit of leeway here. Um, these bore 
cords are uh, just untreated pine. Let me have a think of where I've put my... So these boards are untreated pine. I, I'll maybe post the measurements if anyone's particularly interested. Uh, and some 65mm timber screws, batten screws. It is pretty solid. I can jump up and down on it. I'm about 70 kilograms. So hopefully it sits nicely on there. Uh, the next video uh, or the next part of this series I'll, I'll hopefully have it on that dolly. Okay. It's a little later in the day, same day, and as skill stroke luck would have it, my uh, homemade dolly works absolutely beautifully. The, um, the original plan was to line up the timber with these bolts here, which we have. The lower, the lowest one here, which does have a little bit of a bend in it, but to be honest, it's not. I'm not too concerned because I'm not going to be moving it around too much. They exactly match up uh, for these bolts here, so I can secure it more from if I want, uh, secure it if I want. And this front post here, as you can see, the timber through each of these bolts exactly lines up, and I think we're pretty good for height as well. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing too much moving with it but we've got plenty of clearance there and as I said in the earlier part of this video those casters are, are rated each corner for, for 100 kilograms so that is a win and um, that is basically a little bit more of a clean up remove some things that like maybe the boot you can see how it looks like a Swiss cheese that uh, cockpit there inside the engine bay um, the problem, at the very last bit that, that caused me any issues was actually that the rivets here had been riveted through to the chassis. So I actually I haven't, well, I didn't want to remove the whole um, plate, but I've had to just drill out those front three rivets here, and then the thing lifted off really nicely. Actually, it didn't. Um, two people um, easily able to lift it onto my dolly, and the dolly's casters have got brakes, so I can wheel it around and make sure it doesn't roll out of my garage. So that is perfect, and I've got a little bit of scrap uh, timber left over. It's where I can brace it if needs be, if it's if it's starting to look like it needs it. But actually, for, for for the purposes of what it was designed for, that's fantastic. The timber itself cost only um, less than twenty dollars Aussie dollars. The casters actually were the most expensive thing. They were forty dollars for the four. They were ten dollars each. But that's just because they had the brakes and they were rated for higher weight and they're reusable obviously so I can salvage this and strip it all back down once I'm finished for the job and use it in future. Uh, and the other thing to, to might as well mention in this post is this was a side project that took me away for oh two or three days worth of um, refurb. This was a really old scabby um, winch that someone used for their boat ramp here in the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. And it was disgusting looking, so it was actually used to tow a one ton boat up about a 45 degree angle, so it's got plenty of grunt. It's really overkill for what I need. It's an industrial winch. It's got about a six or seven ton capacity with the two spools. So I uh, stripped it all back to bare metals and uh, sandblasted some bits of it and basically just with a grinder and wire wheel and flap discs brought it all the way back took it to bits and just made sure it was all greased up all the bearings and things like that and then just it's not the best paint job in the world but sprayed it up red and black just to make it look a bit prettier uh, took the motor to pieces and just made sure all that was nice and functional it's actually got a big oil reservoir in there as well so I made sure that was all topped up with new oil and so what it allows me to do is essentially winch the car the what's left of the the chassis down my driveway which is a little bit steeper than um, you would like so I have to come up with this contraption with the winch but that is what we're looking at now that is our uh, 1959 MGA chassis obviously with an MGB engine and um, it does look precarious the way I've pulled that master cylinder forward but don't worry nothing is under too much tension and it'll all get taken to pieces anyway and refurbed so um, yeah, this is what we're left with. It is filthy, but on first initial walk round the chassis, it looks to be pretty good in terms of no real nasty obvious rot and rust. Um, I did make this mistake when I was initially securing. These are, um, I thought I'd better do straps rather than metal and metal. These are rated for for 2,000 kilograms each one, so the chassis and the engine can't be any more than 
couple hundred kilograms um, so they're more than adequate for the job but initially I had it roped I had just one round here thinking that this was actually bolted to the underside of the body clearly it wasn't and what happened was it just pulled it pulled it over so um, thankfully there was no mishaps with the car rolling down the driveway so it's nice and secure now on that front cross member um, so yeah the next stage is stripping the axle and the drivetrain taking the engine out and then the, the bare chassis will go for sandblasting and, and painting uh, acid dipping and then painting as well so um, yeah we're making progress we're slow we're slow but we're getting there this was quite a key moment in the life of this rebuild I think getting the body off so I'm quite chuffed of my my engineering. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that could have done an awful lot better and would have done it in metal and some beautiful welds. I'm rapidly discovering that welding is a, an art form as I knew it was but more of an art form than I perhaps gave it credit for so my uh, my welds on these on these bars here, bracing bars, are just really are quite ugly and I'm almost embarrassed to, to show them. This one's not even functional anymore but that was uh, used to fulcrum up the body when I was bringing it off so there was a lot of weight going through that and it's quite a thin um, square tube so not too perturbed by that one. This one is the one that's getting keeping most of the, the body square and that will remain until we either get the repairs done on the other side or it, it, it gets mated back to the chassis. So there's a few bits and bobs here and there and I've got to drill out those and the striker plate and the, or the hinge I should say on the A pillar. The striker plate is back here. It's got a little plate inside. Again on the other side there's a few bolts that need to be drilled out that were stubborn and either snapped off or I had to drill out. But a uh, little bit of light coming through there so that'll need a repair but and again these need drilled out. They, they, they put up too much of a fight and I got fed up. But no it's the, the dolly itself works very well most of the the weight is obviously going down vertically, so other than that cross member there, which is bowed slightly, and I could brace that if I wanted to, but um, the rest of it looks very sure, very supported. There's no horrible creaks, and I've moved it around the garage a bit already, just to give myself a bit more working space. So, a win. This is the first video for about four months, five months, so um, hopefully I'll get the project moving along a little bit quicker now. I'm still guesstimating this is going to be quite a few years probably because I'm not I've got a job and I've got two small kids life gets in the way but uh, that's it for today hopefully I'll get another video up soon and we can uh, see some progress of my garage looking a little bit less cluttered because all that is going to go to uh, all the panels are going to go off to get uh, stripped anyway. so thanks for everyone's comments if you've got any other Things that you think I should be aware of, perils and pitfalls, please let me know. I really appreciate everyone uh, giving me their their insights into things because a lot of you have actually done this project before, some of you a couple of times by all accounts. So um, yeah, thanks for all the comments and for the people that have been sending me website links and giving me some clues along the way. Um, I'll sign out for now and yeah, hope to have another video up pretty soon for you. Thanks guys.